guys, what is going on? My name is Brian and today we're here coming back with a very unique video. Why is it unique? Because it's Iceland. Welcome back to American Reacts to Geography Now Iceland. Well, my friends, some of you guys might still be here. Some of you guys are probably not. If you guys did not notice, YouTube took down the music series version of the Iceland because of a uh, Bork or Bidork, Bidork, whatever, however you pronounce it. Bro, for like the average human being, Icelandic is like the most complex language to learn. Just saying. Hi guys, my name is Brian. If this is the very first time you're seeing me, what's up? I'm currently on an adventure to discover music, culture, and food, and religion, and everything else in between from all the countries around the world, starting in Europe. Yet somehow, I ended up here in Iceland. We're gonna be checking out an amazing video by a YouTube channel here named Geography Now. What they usually do, they educate people like me and you about the amazing things about each individual country. So if you do wanna check out the original, it is gonna be linked down in the description box. We usually cut them and edit them a little bit to make it easier on us, you know, cause too much information. <laughs> All right, my friends, so make sure you check out my Instagram. It should be somewhere here on this video. If not, you could do it down below into the description box and just click it and go. How easy. But let's see what we can learn today about Iceland. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So full disclosure before we start, like my pronunciation guy. for Icelandic words is gonna suck so bad in this episode. I do not advise you to play a drinking game for every time I mispronounce something. You will get alcohol Done. poisoning and you might die. I repeat, you could die watching this. <laughs> I don't want to die. Iceland! Just the name invokes an obvious clue about where it is geographically. First of all, the country is located at the confluence of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans east of Greenland and just south of the Arctic Circle. The country is divided into six constituencies, three big ones, and three of which are confusing because they basically just split up the most populous areas in the west. Reykjavik is the capital oh. and the northernmost capital in the world, which is split into two constituencies, north and south, whereas the southwest constituency is divided into four non-contiguous exclaves, but they still act as one constituency, not what? four. So it's six small separate entities that act as three constituencies. Get it? <laughs> no. Great! This was done to help with the imbalance of the sparsely populated outer regions. Of the that was literally me. Located in the Reykjavik metropolitan area. Nonetheless, most of the country still refers God to areas located in traditional eight region zones, which are divided like this. The country has many domestic airports, but the one large scale international airport is Keflavik International, and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik and Akureyri. Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic airports except for seasonal service to Greenland International. Iceland's domain we is had a wow air, around the which made traveling to Iceland homes, very cheap. Smaller islands and archipelagos off their coasts. The most populated ones being Heime, Hrisse, and Grimse, and some in the south, like the newest island that just popped up in the 60s, Surtse, which is off limits to anyone except permitted scientists who study it. Otherwise, oh, Iceland may be rugged, but the islanders sure have paved a way for you to see it all. The Ring Road. This guy takes you all around the entire country, and depending on how much time you want to stop and see the sites, it could take you anywhere between four-ish to seven days to complete. Otherwise, that sounds pretty the reasonable, though. Sites and landmarks might include the National Gallery, the Viking World Museum, the stone carvings of Powell Guzmason, the U.S. Navy D3 plane wreckage Whoa. site, the hit Viking village, the Sea Monster Museum, pretty much all of Akureyri, the Whale Museum, the Design Center, all over the countryside you can find turf houses with grass on their roofs. That looks like straight up like landmark, out of the Lord of the Rings. High school shaped church. Now as interesting as those man-made sites and landmarks may be, these they names are killing me, man. Land has to offer. Let's jump into the fire and ice. All right, let me just put it this way. Iceland doesn't need an amusement park or roller coasters because the entire island is just like a wonderland in itself. First of all, Iceland is the 18th largest island in the Sounds world. Fair. The second largest in all of Europe. The entire country lies transected on the Mid-Atlantic Range, which divides the North American tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, splitting open about two centimeters every year. You can even oh, see wow. the divide for yourself with your own eyes. Nearby Reykjavik at Thing... With the largest natural What are lake, these Thing letters? The land splits open and you can literally walk from Eurasia to North America. On Underneath the waters, you can get even closer to the divide at the Silfra, whew, that was easy, known as the clearest <laughs> water diving spot in the world where visibility can go up to 100 meters. Oh my Over god. Eleven percent of the country is mountainous with the tallest point, Kvandalsnukur. 11% of the country is covered with six major I gotta give him credit for even trying, dude. Vatnajökull, and the smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull. With hundreds of volcanoes, and about 30 of them are consistently active as the longest river, the, the beginning was a fair warning. Meanders through the deep central Hopskullur glacier to 
to the ocean. <gasps> so basically, the entire island is geothermal. Everywhere you go, chances are you can probably find a natural hot spring hidden somewhere. Oh my god, that is wilderness. so cool, Not only dude. That, but Iceland also harbors and capitalizes off of this unique, valuable resource as much as possible. When the first Vikings came in, they were like, "Wow, it is cold in here." <laughs> I mean, I knew Norway was chilly, but dang, is there anything here we can use to not like freeze to death? <laughs> yeah, they killed a lot of sheep and made oh my god food. then eventually they found out how to generate power with the hot springs geothermal energy provides about a quarter of the country's power alone and the rest is mostly hydroelectric from dams and renewable sources nonetheless only about wow. one percent of their land is arable, mostly confined to the south peripheral lowlands where root vegetables and kale and cabbage and cauliflower are grown alongside numerous geothermal heated greenhouses that harvest warm climate produce like tomatoes cucumbers and yes even bananas making iceland the northernmost banana producing country in the world of course the country also Facts. hosts a unique variety variety of arctic wildlife like puffins, foxes, seals, narwhals, and the national animals, the griff falcon, and the famous highly accredited Icelandic horses. By the way, oh my yes, god, it's true. their is luscious the hair. Mosquitoes, however, they do have two species of midges. <laughs> Midges. <laughs> midges. Which are midges. And actually, one of the species does actually bite, so it's kind of like having mosquitoes anyway. <laughs> Iceland has biting midges. Traditional Icelandic food is, <laughs> let's just say, even my Icelandic friend said this. They Give that guy a raise, man. Why would anyone eat this? Yeah, let's just say the Vikings had some very unorthodox tactics when it came to food preservation. Dishes I haven't like tried it yet. Dishes like sheep's head, stockfish jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles, and the famous haukar. <laughs> what is it exactly? Well, let's just say, hey, so I uh, got the shark, but it's poisonous. Uh, how do I eat it? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple months, and then cut off the brown crust, and then serve it. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I'll, 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 there are some delicious redeeming Icelandic foods. Is that there. actually a thing? Some amazing smoked lamb served with bean salad and grilled haddock and herring dishes. You can literally drink almost any water from any stream, pond, or lake, or river in Iceland. The whole island kind of acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. You have places like the smooth, conical Kirkjufell Mountain. Brandon has a tattoo of that. Oh my god, ironically. The crystal ice cake. In Vatniyoku, that looks the beautiful. Trail in the highlands, literally like every five kilometers, you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers in the south. <laughs> every Pretty five kilometers, all, the all right. Is empty and beautiful for you to explore with no tourists. The sea monster of Kvitsurgur, Dragni Island, Griyoku Caves, Mayfell Green Volcano on Black Sand Beaches, Krafla and Naumstar, Black Sand Beaches, Grand holy crud, hot man. Tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed fossils of Hagbjanya. Yeah, just, just throw in the towel, man. Holy crud. Now, if the Nordics were a family, Iceland would be like the little brother that got lost at sea from a shipwreck, got stranded on an island, and became a wild man. First of all, Iceland has a population of about <laughs> that's a good, that's accurate. people and is the most sparsely populated country in Europe. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Icelandic, about 4% are Polish, and the remainder are other immigrants from all over, mostly Nordic, West European... How did these Poles end up there? They also use the Icelandic kroner as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, being Icelandic is actually very unique genetically in contrast to the rest of their Nordic cousins. Basically, way back Yeehaw, the Vikings were like, hey, we're sick of Norway. Let's make a new home. Oh, but wait. We need women. <laughs> but most of the Norwegian women were like, uh -uh. so they made a quick stop to the British Isles no, and kidnapped man. a bunch of Irish and Celtic women and brought them over. About 70% of all their women, that is. To this day, a typical Icelander oh. actually has a portion of Irish or Celtic roots in their blood. Now, obviously, if you are one of the few lucky people that hasn't ended up in an ambulance yet, you'll have noticed that the Icelandic language <laughs> is incredibly unique, often touted as one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. I mean, half the time to learn is make no, no sense. Doubt about F can that. make a V or a P sound. Sometimes P and a T make a F sound. Sometimes the G makes a W sound. These two letters both make a F sound. And sometimes when there's two L's, it makes like a <laughs> sound. Most Nordic peoples have a hard time cracking the Icelandic code. Except Throw in some the numbers Faroese there, why not? On the Faroe Islands. They seem to have a similar sense of pronunciation and grammar as the Icelanders. Icelandic and Faroese are the closest languages to ancient Norse out of all the Nordic languages. If you give them a script written in ancient Norse, chances are they could probably understand it. Whereas Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes are like, ha! Nope. Now because of the small population, Icelandic culture is very communal. Chances are everybody either knows each other or they know somebody who knows another person. Therefore, an ingrained sense of trust kind of roots itself in the mindsets of most people. This is why Iceland has one of the lowest crime rates in the entire world, sometimes topping off at number one. And also, you, as it's accountability, yes. The world's most peaceful country, according to the Global Peace Index. Oh, by the way, in Heck Iceland, yes. nobody technically has a surname. They just adopt the last name dependent on their father's first name, and they just add son or daughter after it. So, for what? example, a man named Alex with a father named, I don't know, Bjarki, would be named Alex Bjarkison. Or if it was a woman, her last name would be Bjarki Dota. Oh. Now, as small as Iceland is, they've made a huge impact in the okay. world's media outlets. Somewhere in the late 90s and early 2000s, word spread fast, and to this day, tourism is almost getting out of hand as they get over three times their own population in tourism every year. Hotels need to be built, staff need to be hired, and diplomacy is key in operating the whole deal. Which brings us to... Wow. That is now, crazy. Now, Iceland has a problem. 
a good problem. Too many people like him now, and it's all happening too fast. First of all, Iceland has always had He's overwhelmed. The in Canada, the U.S. was the first to recognize Iceland as a state after independence, and both countries not only give some of the biggest business, but also house the largest communities of Icelanders outside of Iceland. Finland is like the mysterious... I don't think I've ever met anyone from Iceland. They enjoy both being outsiders because although they are both Nordic, they are not considered Scandinavian. When it comes to humor, they totally get each other and click instantly with dry, semi-dark undertone jokes. Sweden is like the older brother that they love, but is too busy working Sounds like Finland. charts to hang out with. Denmark is close, although Danes practically have no idea what skiing is, considering their flat landscape. Most Icelanders learn Danish in school first before they learn English, even though they think it's pretty useless. When it comes to their best I friends, agree most with that, Icelanders I've talked to have said Norway and the Faroe Islands. As mentioned before, Icelanders have historical roots to Norway, and the two have had very close relations, especially since they both can relate to being subjugated under the Danes at one point in time. The Faroe Islands are like their weird cousins that totally get them and love to hang out with. It's a magical Aww. moment when an Icelander meets a Faroese person. In conclusion, Iceland is a land where cold meets hot, old meets new, small yet big, horrible fermented shark meets your dinner plate. I hope you're still alive, <laughs> and if you are, stay tuned, because the big guy, India, is coming up next. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Barbie. Where to begin? Where to begin? Jesus Christ. So how about we start off by one of you guys DMing me on Instagram, like a voice recording as to how to actually pronounce that church, like that very famous church that you guys have in the center. It started, I think, with like an H. Iceland definitely has a lot of amazing things that I was not aware of, especially with that weird thing about the, the shark. Like, is that actually a thing? Like, have you actually tried that out? Like, that just, that just can't be healthy for you. It's actually really funny because he mentioned something that never even crossed my mind. Like, I, I never imagined, like, I don't know, someone holding a banana out in Iceland. You guys should be extremely proud of your amazing language. It is very unique, very special. And then on top of that, you guys are one of the few, along with the Faroese Islands, that is actually able to understand, like, the, I don't know, this ancient Norse text code. I don't know. Norse code. That sounds intense. It sounds just like like KGB type deal. Like, I like that. We're going to go with that. In case you guys did not know, I actually live in South Florida, which is one of the peninsulas of the United States. I'm, I'm towards like the tip. So it's really freaking hot here. But with that being said, we do have a lot of mosquitoes down here. So it gets pretty annoying. I did not know that. Apparently in Iceland, mosquitoes are a little bit almost impossible to inhabit. There is one thing that does connect Iceland along with South Florida. And that was an airline here named Wow Air that used to take you from Miami all the way to Reykjavik, hopefully I said that right, <laughs> for a round trip of under $200, which is pretty reasonable. And if I'm not mistaken, let me see. Hey Siri, how much is $1 to Icelandic krona? The answer is 126 Icelandic krona. Now, I don't know if that could get you a soda, but I'm assuming it does. So the good thing about that airline company is that it was so cheap to fly there, but from what I understand, Iceland is super, super freaking expensive. So I'm gonna have to save up like for centuries before I go and visit any of you guys there. Iceland seems to be like this picturesque thing, like straight out of a movie. There's a lot of amazing things that he mentioned here that I would personally love to see, such as like that sea monster thing. that was like these big rocks standing by there. I thought it was pretty badass. Not to mention like that little, that little hill right there, maybe it was a mountain. It looks small here, but nonetheless, it was surrounded by black sand. I was just freaking mind boggling. And then there was something about like this ice cave that just like freaking blew my mind. Anyways, I'm very happy that Iceland has been getting a lot of popularity. That's definitely good for your economy. And I mean, I don't need it to get more expensive, but maybe I should think about that. All I know is that I'm for sure gonna be sticking away from the food in this scenario. This is one of the few times I actually say this, but uh, I am, um, the, the food, yeah. Come, come, I'm good. Let me know down in the comment section some of your favorite dishes or if there's something that's not so crazy that you would recommend for me to try. Speaking about trying food, I don't know if you guys knew, but you had the opportunity to send over some. Right here we have a PO box in case you want to send a postcard, which would be pretty litty as a titty. Or just a handwritten message or maybe some snacks, treats, and candies, and in between. Just please let me know if you send something. I do want to give you a shout out. We're going to be making a whole episode about it. So congratulations, you legend. It was pretty awesome learning so many amazing things about Iceland. I really appreciate this guy making these videos. They're so freaking bomb. Anyhow, I really appreciate you sticking around. It's been pretty awesome spending time with you. Make sure you stick around until the end of this one. We got more amazing videos at the end. And in case you didn't know, I have a Patreon page. You do what you will with that information. But until next time, my friends, hasta la pasta, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye.